This is Twit. So, you may recall there was a Microsoft engineer who raised a stink, uh, I think it was late last year, about AI and all the problems and no one's paying attention to me and yada, yada, yada. You may be surprised to discover that person still works at Microsoft. Although I have to see after uh, say after his uh, CNBC interview this week, that might be the end of that. Mm. Um, he has gone public with Microsoft's attempts to prevent him from complaining or talking or uh, got the whatever. weird parallels with Google's guy too, doesn't it? My yes. Goodness. Yep. Yep. So he uh, he had warned Microsoft about this yeah, late last year. Uh, they refused to take down the tool or alter it. He kept generating horrific images. I'm not going to go into what they are exactly. It doesn't really matter. But um, and they were like, yep, don't care. Everything's fine. You know, and, and this is one of those, you know, deals where there are people who ethically sort of feel like we need better safeguards in place. And right. Microsoft, who has this kind of strategic imperative to get the stuff going as quickly as possible. Yeah. And I, and I, I appreciate and I've certainly heard from many corners that they are feeling like leadership's being a little too cavalier, that they that they're moving awfully fast and with less caution than necessary. But violent images is the American way. I know. Well, so, OK. So, for example, today I tried to use Copilot to create an image for a story about uh, Epic Games and Apple. Uh, Apple has again killed Epic Games developer account again. Yeah. So I prompted it with something to the tune of, I want to see characters from Fortnite attacking the Apple logo. And it refused. It said, no, we're not going to have this conversation. Right. <laughs> Which I said, I'm actually, I'm actually paying for this conversation. We are going to have it. So I rewarded it slightly. And then it, it just did one that they weren't really attacking it, but they were just kind of jumping around. That's fine. Right. <laughs> it is weird. Uh, every time it has refused to do something, there was one I tried to do. It was like a create a robot army attacking a city. Nope. Create a robot army moving into the city or marching into the city. No problem. You know, so yeah. uh, this engineer, interestingly, he talks about these kinds of things. Like there's a drug reference thing. He's been able to do a bunch that CNBC could replicate. Right. If you typed in the letters, uh, the numbers 420, it would do whatever. Um, it Microsoft puts on a block. And CNBC just wrote the words out or wrote the numbers out as words and it worked fine. Right. And so what this reminds me of is the TSA let's respond to yesterday's security worry today. And, right. We're, we're, we're always, yeah, we're going to do one offs and, oh, they attacked us this way. Uh, okay. Let's fix that one thing, you know, and I'd like to think we could maybe have a technology, I don't know, call it AI that maybe could look at this stuff a little more heuristically perhaps. And, go after types of prompts and not individual specific prompts. But I, we were early enough here that I feel like we're literally responding to one of people can right. go well, to it AI. It almost feels like intentionally inferior solutions. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Like in the early days of antivirus, these things would target specific known viruses. It was very okay. easy. But of course, these attacks got more sophisticated, especially in the beginning of the 2000s when we had all the different security attacks that you know in part led to trustworthy computing etc yeah and you basically not you microsoft has to over time develop these things that what like we have today they look at the characteristics of something mm -hmm. and assign a score essentially and say based on our determination we believe that this thing is malicious or could be or i gotta also mention getting people complaining about being blocked right like it's gotta work both ways I, like I said, I, I gave a really silly example, but I, this is now maybe the third or fifth or whatever time this has happened to me where it literally kind of came back in kind of a grumpy way, you know, like as if I had asked it to do something wrong. I'm not actually, I'm not asking to generate sexually explicit imagery here, idiot. I'm, I'm just, I'm creating a graphic for an article for a technical news story. It's not a, I'm not creating like a, a manga comic here. Yeah, it's like not, not a plan to take over the village. No. And I, and, but I, I can explain that in plain English to you and you may or may not agree, but I, there's no, nothing I can say to a co-pilot that's going to make it agree. They put in these hard blocks, right. That are very simplistic. Yeah. So anyway, I, uh, right. will probably lost his job over going on TV. I, yeah, I think so. This was maybe, and maybe this was the calculus. But at least he's not saying it's sentient and trying to kill us all. That's perfect. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's true. And of course, uh, Google also had, uh, famous problems, infamous problems with their image generation capabilities in uh, Gemini a couple weeks ago, I think now. Yep. And uh, I don't think that's ever come back, by the way. It will, right? I mean, they they yeah. said at the time they would bring it back at some point, but um, not no. yet. 
but these are these are the battles of a these are the growth battles of a product like it's this yeah. is not even weird like duh yes and and yeah it, the challenge will be a company who's incented to provide as many services to as many people as possible trying to throttle themselves in yeah. you know we're nowhere near discussing legislation and perhaps where this this is where this engineer wanted to go but that's right. That's a tricky piece of legislation to push through too. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft's holding pattern strategy here is the same thing as Apple and Google when it comes to protecting their app store monopolies. They just want to make sure, keep this going as long as you can. Stall, can stall, stall. Right. You know. But I don't know how you could globally define a violent image any more than you can globally define pornography, right? Isn't the current yeah. case law for pornography? I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> yes. So how do you, what's the prompt for that? <laughs> you know, how do you train AI to be able to come to that determination? Right. It knows it when it sees it. Yeah. I don't know we're away, away from that. Uh, yeah. And of course this is moving quick, so it'll probably be April, but as of today, um, <laughs> yeah. It'll be announced in April. We don't know when it'll show. <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, we do, we do live in interesting times. Um, yeah. We, you know, arguably, Paul, we always have. It's just a nice. Yeah, well, but my God, it's, has it escalated, right? I mean, we've had some downtimes news from a news cycle perspective. There's no doubt yeah. about it. But Oh, no, you're waxing poetic for the happy old days. Man. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.